So you know what happened? When I now got home, the story is just becoming interesting. When I got home from that service, then he told me that his younger sister was to get wedded and it was going to be around from service. So I got home. I got home. Usually, maybe sometimes there was a time he came visiting to my house. I was not around. I couldn't go back to him. But when I got home, I said, Lord, if actually this guy is to be my husband, at least he's around now. Can't he even just show up to come and greet me? Do you know what the Spirit of God told me? He said, pray that die yo my husband every three he said you you should know this kind of lady or girl i was i never wanted to call him my husband he said, my husband okay. the person that doesn't care about me the spirit of god no allow me to say say call his name say die yo my husband i reluctantly did that every strange women that have taken his heart the lord should scatter it that was how i prayed it was so painful like i was humiliated or, or like or like so and i went a friend some friends we went to the sisters uh what's it called wedding mm -hmm. pre pre preparation we now saw him i saw him there again again even the way i saw him don't let me say it on international distance okay do you know what at least i want to say again again mm. when i got there do you know i saw him hey god i i felt like falling I saw this handsome guy with one, hey, trying to touch one lady like this. I said, eh? so that actually that, what the spirit of God, you, you see how the spirit of God works, can, can, can mirror you inside your, your closet. I said, eh, hey, okay. So when he saw me, he was like, you know, say, sister Joke, now came back. That's how you say, brother, your sister Joke. <laughs> Now, we now came talking. I went in the company of two friends. So, so those two friends were there talking. We talked all night. As in, he was, he now started telling me. But do you know one thing I value about him? He's so down to earth. And let me tell you, that's the only thing you need in a relationship. He's so down to earth. So plain. So when we got talking, we started, I was doing shakara for him. I said, I do not want to talk to him. He wants to talk to me. He just wanted to go. And he's this kind of person that is... He's always full of himself. Let me say it. Yes. I used to see him as very pompous, very cocky, dead. As in dead, as in, oh my shako, me there, handsome boy. Uh, as in, that's how I used to feel. So when we now got talking, was he, he now broke down. He now told me so many girls are disturbing his life, this and that. I do not even call him. And you know, now we are getting to trying to get ready for marriage. He was already seven. I was actually out of this uh, university. Yes, we're not we're not saying anything. So so many girls were disturbing him, this and that. He's no longer that close to God. He's just this booky booky thing and all the likes. So I started to give him God nuggets. I started to say, okay, you have to do it this way. You have to do it this way. You have to do that. It's shine. I will tell you. <laughs> so you have to do it this way. So that was our oh, and I felt so pained. And I saw my heroes. Yes, I saw. Our upbringing, I want to say something at this point that is so important. Our upbringing was good. Our religious upbringing that we should not, guys should not go with ladies as in our where we grew up from. It's good. But there's this particular word that I've, over the years I've gone to see that we, we should just try to work on as in for others that might still be having such notion. It's good that we weren't telling other, each other that we're, we're, we're going to be married together or we were not going to get a birth. There should still be this sense of connection. We're just totally disconnected. And for a relationship to stand, there should be connection. You should maintain your God, maintain your godly principles that will not make you sleep together or anything. But I felt leaving him so in, into the ends of so many girls. It was just God. That was how the Spirit of God had to tell me that. Mention his name, that all the strange girls and the strange women that were trying to take him out of your head, you just have to pray that they should go away. So... I felt so pained in my heart. I just, and yet there's nothing, there's nothing like kissing. Oh, let me tell you, go, 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 go. Nothing like touching, like, eh, mm. who born you? Error. We, Error. Until the day we were there. Even when we did our engagement, I just tried to touch my husband. I said, don't touch me, don't touch me. <laughs> because it's, after the, the engagement, engagement we still have like weeks. One interval. month. Yeah. Before we did before the church the wedding. church wedding. And there is something about me. I believe that if you want to, if you are saying you want to wait, then Kukuma waits the real wait, not pretentious wait, so that your honeymoon will not be 
on his son. <laughs> so that's it. So there's nothing like we did not do anything kissing, romance, neighbor for we could you share So till the day we got married. So that was what I now felt pain in my heart. I now took it upon myself. I started praying for him. Then from that uh time, we started communicating on uh yes, I think we started communicating. We just I'll be telling him something about God, how is a relationship with God, make sure. And I discovered something. This is a real cogent point. Nobody can keep a man for you. I tell you, read my lips. Nobody, however great that man loves you, it's only the spirit of God that can keep him. It's in men, poly, polygamy. Just to see, oh, you, oh, you washi, they see red, they like it. Purple, they like. Short, they like. Small, they like. They like anything on skirts, anything. But the only thing, in my own view, I want to hear your opinion, that can keep a man, it's the fear of God, it's the spirit of God. So I start praying for him, then see you, see you. I got service. <laughs> When I got service, I had a very lovely friend. Uh, he would be communicating with my friend. Then we will be communicating. At times when he calls me, I just say, let us pray. Let us. He would just be, he would be telling me stories. Oh, I would just say, be, because me, I'm this that of spirit. I say, let us pray. Okay, we'll pray. <laughs> we say, <laughs> Sometimes you need gist of what is happening around you, what has transpired. But you know, most of the time, she would just be like, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's fast forward it. We now got into Got the you. time. So when it was time for me to really tie the knot, and I was ready that, yes, I'm going to propose today. Hmm. I had two versions of proposal. <laughs> I had two versions. The church version and my own version. So, I remember the first time because uh, there's a particular church we attended together and when it was, when it, whenever it's time for you to get into marriage, you have to go and see a particular committee. So, getting to the committee, they asked me, okay, why are you here? And I just looked at them and said, yes, I'm here to, for marriage and I'm interested in so, 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 and so. They were just looking at me, the way I was saying it, I wasn't saying it like, Bro, eh, I drank, I saw mangoes on the tree, <laughs> and I plucked the mango, I gave out the mango, the mango turns to banana, and four children started running with Mbeke. <laughs> now, I just went there. They said, okay, what's your testimony? I said, I, I love her and I want to get married to her. The <laughs> whole place was, they were confused. They were like, what did you just say? I said, I love her and I want to get married to her. They were so confused and were like, I'm trying in their mind, they'll be like, is this person in this church? Why is he talking like this? This is worldly. <laughs> so they said, why? That is that, okay, that if they allow me to go and tell her that, to go and propose to her, what am I going to tell her? I, was, I just said, ah, I walk up to her and I tell her that I love you and I want to get married to her, to you. They said, what? That's how they said, I'm not convincing enough. I said, okay. And I also them, I asked them some questions, which made them to really sit back and like, wow, this guy knows what he's really saying. I said, what was the basis of getting married if I don't love the person? That why did Jesus Christ come to die for the whole world? It's not because of love. So I can never marry a lady that I don't love. I'm because we are in the church and I just see one, one person, not even because of beauty or what have you. If I don't love her, I'm not going to get married. And they were like, wow, that's good. I, they said, there is no, I said, there is no revelation. There is no dream. But you know what? I had the dream. But I promised myself that I'm not going to tell anybody dream. Because I will never marry based on the basis of dream. Because, and this to most uh, Christians, you need to watch this out. Watch out for this. Dreams can be corrupted. They can play a movie for you, you know. When Satan wants to even destroy your life, he can play a movie for you and you begin to work on that. If you don't love the person you want to get married to, stay away. <laughs> walk just, away. Just walk away. <laughs> hmm? So, uh, to fast forward the talk, the next is we cross all those orders and it was now time to propose. So, when I got there, So that was just it. And I really, really want to really, really thank God. It's been wonderful. It's been funny. 
It's been lovely. There have been real challenges. If you want to hear about the challenges, you just have to wait back. <laughs>